אוקיי? בעזרת השם, נעשה ונצליח. I want to welcome you to another session of the Lighthouse Project on the Zoom platform as we continue our learning, our virtual learning. Tonight we are going to put in another installment into the King is in the Field series. Uh, this is a series that typically we visit uh, this time of year around the time of Rosh Hashanah, the time of Elul, the time of Selichot. Uh, And uh, tonight's class is called The Merit. Of the forefathers very very interesting because if you um, if, if you are in an exploratory mode of the religion and when you're saying things and you don't even know why you're saying them this will be an eye-opening class to explain a lot of what's going on as far as the teshuva season and it'll be an eye-opening Uh, lesson in regards to our daily lives how we're so disconnected from uh, from a very huge concept in Judaism this could have easily been uh, a lesson in the basics in Judaism series but it's very relevant to the king is in the fields here so we'll uh, get to that in a minute before we get started I'd like to give um, some dedications and honorable mentions Be'ezat Hashem may this class be to the Ilui Nishmat of David ben Zohaya, Yaniv ben Rina, Shmuel ben Amuma, Tzion ben Zechaya, Rav Ezra Baton, Saya Ita bat Shmuel, Abraham and Freddy ben Moshe, Mordechai Haron ben Zev, Daniel ben Juna, Meir Chaim ben Rivka, Rivka bat Yehuda, Ephraim ben Mordechai Levi, Yosef ben Shlomo, Alegria, Aleg- and Miriam bat Simi, and Menachem Mendel ben Hanan, Dvar Fega bat Shmuel. Uh, our lists are getting longer, but it's a good thing. That means that more people are listening. More people are getting involved and more people care about their loved ones and their deceased uh, and that they should be matzliach, they should be successful uh, either in their ilu nishmat or lehavdil in other endeavors in their lives. So even though that, uh, you know, we're going through a pandemic and the list is, has grown a bit more than usual, but it's all the best because we can see how the, the children are involved in sending Torah up to the Shemaim, sending up merits to the Shemaim in the honor of their... Uh, parents, grandparents, etc., etc. On a lighter note, Itbarach Shemo Shal Kadosh Baruch Hu, Ezat Hashem, may this class be to the Hatzlacha on, in the Zivug of Inbar Bar Jaklin, Batchem Bar Jaklin, Yehuda Leiv Ben Mendel. Uh, also, may be this be to the Refua Shelema of Esther Bat Vishna, Yeshaya Yosef Ben Zari, Yerachamiel Deel Ben Tova Basha, Yonatan Ben Osnat, Rafael Ben. Frecha Phoebe and um, yeah, her. Also, to the general success, health, wealth, and all they do, all they do as well as Gmach um, Tova, to Stacy Esther Bat Miriam, Guy Bendina and family, Michael Citron and family, Henshi Gordetsky and family, Avraham and Yosef Sakar, Jonathan, Moshe, and Julia Rimi. Shlomo and Eliyahu ben Esther Stacy and Rafael ben Galit and the Bezat Hashem Moshe Yitzchak ben Chaya Golda will be as successful in this Teshuvah process. Okay, let's get started. So, as we continue to inch forward towards Judgment Day, as we are smack in the middle of Yamim Hanoraim, the awesome days, the days of awe and fear, This 40-day period of the king is in the field, HaMelech HaBasadeh. The time when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is more accessible than usual. The time of forgiveness and mercy. Yemei HaSelichot, Yemei HaRachamim. The time of returning to God. The time to returning to God's ways. Zman Teshuva, it's the time to do Teshuva. Time to do repentance. It's also the time to do Teshuva. What's Teshuva? Like we said, Tashuv, hey, come back to the hey, come back to Hashem. This is the time period where we take a uh, take stock of all of our spiritual uh, performance of the past year, and we start to rein it back, start to bring it back, and start to get closer and closer. Tashuv to Hashem, come back to Hashem, come back to the right way, in order to atone for our sins that we did in the previous year, and also to start securing. 
a, a good new upcoming year. And all this is done during the month of Elul, the month that we're in right now, the month of Teshuvah. And that leads to the crowning of the king during the month of Tishrei, which is just a few days from now, about 10 or 11 days from now. As a matter of fact, we've learned many different acronyms for Elul. The most famous one is Anile Dodi Ve Dodi Li. I am for my beloved and my beloved is for me, which we learned from it in our previous lessons that it's about us making the first move. It's about us uh, activating the Teshuvah process. And in return, Hashem is going to be the one that is going to forgive us. He's going to be the one who has mercy on us. So we see that the action starts with us and it creates, uh, uh, it reciprocates uh, 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 something from the heavens, which in a little bit we'll discuss on a deeper level. There's a new acronym that we'd, I'd like to learn with you tonight that is also uh, spells out Elul, which is Va'ani Eheye Lahem Lelokim, and I will be for them a God. Va'ani Vav Eheye Alef Lahem Lamed Lelokim Lamed. You take those first uh, letters from each word and it spells out the word Elul which is exactly the month that we're in right now. Now this acronym for Elul, I will be a king for them. He will be a king for who? Well, simply put, he's always been the king of our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and all the way to every generation till today. Every year we crown Hashem. Again, and again, and again, and again. Every single year we crown Hashem around the time of Rosh Hashanah. We crown him as the king of the universe, the king of the world, the king of all existence. He is the king and father of the Jewish people. He is the king of my family. He is the king of me. Every Rosh Hashanah, every Tisha, uh, even though that it's something that we do on a daily basis, but sometimes if you forget it, then we press a reset once a year where we crown Hashem king. And during this time, it's very, very important to get connected to what's really going on. You have to imagine that you have a court date. On Aleph Tishrei, we are right now in Yud, Chet, no, Yud Tet Be'elul, in about 11 days, about 10 to 11 days, you have a court date in the heavens. And on that day, the court decides whether you live or die, whether you're going to be poor or rich, whether you're going to be healthy or sick, whether you're going to, uh, whether this year is going to be an easy year or a difficult year. Will this year be a smooth ride or a bumpy road? Or any combo in between? Doesn't necessarily have to be either or, either or, uh, or the other extreme or some sort of middle road. And all that depends on our personal spiritual performance of the past year. That's what determines it. Our Teshuvah process during the month of Elul, which is right now. And after Rosh Hashanah, Aset Yemet Teshuvah, that 10 day extension we get, that we know that on Judgment Day, there's a judgment. A Kadosh Baruch Hu does the plus and minus. He adds up all of our mitzvot. He adds up all of our sins. And what he does is he says, according to your spiritual performance, minus your teshuvah, or in addition to your teshuvah, this is your judgment. Now you have a 10-day extension to wheel and deal. Let's start, uh, let's start seeing if we can um, modify the judgment. It's called Din Vecheshbon. First judgment, and then we make a calculation. Which, like we said many times, it's, uh, it's completely backwards for the way things really work. Because typically, first we calculate the pros and cons, and then we see we come out with the judgment. Here, the, the merciful Hashem, He lets us have a judgment, and then He says, okay, now... Let's see if we could work out something for you in the next 10 days before I put the stamp on it, before there is a Gemar Hatimah Tova. Now, when you have 
last year's per per personal performance, whether it's good or bad, that's what you're bringing to the table. You have your teshuvah that you're doing in the month of Elul, good or bad, whatever you're bringing to the table. The heavenly court decides if a person has enough zechuyot to merit to a good new year. Or as we say, shana tova umetuka. They take everything into calculation and they want to see if you're going to be able to merit to a happy, new, and sweet year, which is what we all wish for. So even though we have our past spiritual performance, and even though we have the month of Elul, and we are depending on our Teshuvah to sweeten the judgment, to repair, to sort of uh, wipe away uh, all the transgressions of the past year, there's an additional factor that can change our fate for the upcoming years. One that you might not even ever thought of, let alone considered to be working to your advantage. There is a concept in Judaism called Zechut Avot, the merit of our forefathers. And just to give you an idea what that is, imagine a no limit credit card that you can keep swiping as much as you want and it constantly gets, goes through. And in the heavens, every time that we get into trouble, every time we transgress, every time we go off the road and we do teshuvah and our teshuvah is not enough, every time that we ask for forgiveness and our personal for, uh, uh, teshuvah process was not, was not enough to wipe away the slate clean, we ask God, can we cash in on the merits of our forefathers and Hashem wipes swipes that credit card again and says okay you still got credit you still have credit you can still use the chutavot you can still use the merit of your forefathers to get to get out of the mess that you've gotten yourself into every time we get into a jam we go back to old faithful schutavot schutavot we constantly come to God and we say, we don't merit to be forgiven. We don't have zechuyot. We don't have any merits. Please remember our righteous ancestors. And in their merit, forgive us. That is zechut avot. The merit of our forefathers. But before we can even begin to understand this concept, we need to learn two different lessons first. First, I don't know if you've ever noticed in our prayer, there is a, a group of words that we constantly use in Berachot. You'll find it in Berachot HaShachar, you'll find it in Blessings, you'll find it in Da'amida. As a matter of fact, just a few days ago, we did a whole lesson about the Ratzon and we focused in, we zoomed in on this concept and I might be a bit repetitive from anybody who tuned in for the previous class, but it's very well worth it to listen to it again, to crystallize it, to really understand this concept. In our tefillah, we constantly say, Elokeinu veloke avotenu, my, or, or Elokai veloke avotai, meaning my God and the God of my forefathers. And the question is, why? If I am praying, why can't I just focus on what is very personal to me? Elokai, my God, what's the use or what's the need to say, and the God of my forefathers? Why do I have to say Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, the way that we even say it in the Amidah? So, you know, I guess we'll use that example because it's a great example and it's the one that is most commonly used, the one that is... In the daily Amidah, we say it three times a day. It's good that we should know what we're saying, since we're saying it so many different times, so many, so often. So, I'll take the example of the Amidah. The opening paragraph. Stop. What does that mean? Elokeinu, our God, and the God of our forefathers. And then it continues to say, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov. The God of Abraham, the God of... Uh, of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Okay, what's going on over here? So I have one, our God. 
the God of our forefathers, and then I have to enumerate them, I have to detail them, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, why? So, we come from a tradition that has been passed down from generation to generation, from generation to generation, all the way from Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sorry, even more, all from Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, to Moshe Rabbeinu, to, to Yoshua, to the Skinim, all the way that it went to the, to the kings and to the prophets and to the rabbis, all the way to right here. It's all a, a tradition, a written tradition and an oral tradition. So we believe in God because we were taught by our parents, mother, father, grandfather, teachers, rabbis. And we know that we believe in the God that they believe in. Elohe Avotenu. But in the Amidah, when it says, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov, meaning, we have to imagine that Avraham, who is the, uh, you know, he is the one that brought monotheism into the world. He was the first one to, uh, uh, to introduce that. And Avraham Avinu, had a child, Yitzhak. Yitzhak could have said, you know what? My father, he discovered Hashem. He's promoting Hashem. He's spreading the, uh, he's spreading, uh, the word of God throughout the world. He's introducing people to not to worship idols. You know what? I trust my father. My father is righteous. I'm going to go in his way. I'm going to believe in his God. Even though that Yitzhak could have relied on that, what did he do? He said, no. I got it, Abba. Thank you, Dad. I know that you believe in God, and I believe in Him also because you believe in Him. But I got to have a personal experience. I got to find out for myself who God is for me, to me. And he did. He went on his personal journey, and he did discover God just like his father did. So he, that's Elohe Avraham, and Elohe Yitzchak did it for himself. If you go to Yaakov... Yaakov could have said, you know what, my grandfather is Abraham. My father is Yitzhak. Surely I don't need to check. These are spiritual giants. These guys are on a much higher level than I'll ever be. And I could just rely on their opinion or I can rely on their journey or on their uh, experience. He did not do that. Yaakov went on his personal journey in order to discover God. So we see over here that it's Elokeinu, it's our God. It's an okay of ten. It's the God of our forefathers, and we have We see that there's an independent journey. There's a, a self discovery that every single person needs to go through in order to discover God. In other words, definitely, it's great that we have uh, parents, grandparents, great grandparents that have uh, gave uh, that have passed down to us our heritage, our history, our uh, the Torah. And it's all emet. However, each one is responsible for their independent journey, for their self-discovery, to see what type of relationship they are going to have with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. However, the reason why we mention at my God and the God of my forefathers is because there's a dual relationship over here. There's a personal relationship and there's a universal relationship. There is... One way where I rely on Elohe Avotenu, on the tradition, the lineage. I, re I rely on my parents, on my grandparents, all the way to the patriarchs for continuing their path. Meaning, I'm, I'm, I, I am glad to continue the path of Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aharon, David, Shlomo, all the, 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 the tzaddikim, all the rabbis. Up until today, I'm glad to follow it. Definitely. However... There's also the personal relationship, meaning on a universal level, all the Jews as a whole have a relationship with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, that we are all links in one big chain and we're all interconnected to, to, the, to the Jewish experience. But you add your own link to it, your own share of it. And this uh, dual relationship allows you to interact with God in two ways. One, Hashem. It's me and you, my personal relationship to you, my personal relationship to the religion, to the Torah, and to God. And then the additional relationship is 
is that I am also connected to my heritage, to my ancestry, to my tradition. That I can rely on the people that I come from in order to get connected to their merit, to get connected to their uh, to their schuyot. And I can tell you right here, right now, that we've had spiritual giants in the Jewish lexicon as far as righteous people, whether it's Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aharon, Pinchas, David, Shlomo, what about the Tanaic rabbis, all the holy rabbis, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, all the way to the rabbis today, all the way to your local rabbi. We can connect to all that as one channel to God, and we could also have our own personal experience with God. So, in short, when it comes to the time that we're in right now, which is the time of Elul, uh, the time of Teshuvah, there's a work that you need to do personally, but there's also a, a way to uh, activate forgiveness by connecting to your ancestors. We'll put this thought on pause while we go into the second, uh, second introduction to this lesson before we can really get into this concept of Shkut Avot. In last week's parashat, parashat ki tavo, we discussed the concept of Bikurim. The Bikurim was when the Jewish people finally left the desert and they finally move to Eretz Yisrael. They finally inherit the land. They start their agricultural life. They start becoming farmers to work the land. And once they work the land, they have a, they have a duty to bring all the way from wherever they live to Bet HaMikdash, the Bikurim, the first fruits, meaning the first fruit from each tree from the seven species, so if, let's say if it was a pomegranate or figs or, uh, or, or dates, they would go to the first fruits from that tree, they would mark it, and once they harvested, they would go take these marked fruits, put it in a basket, and come all the way to Bet HaMikdash to say, thank you God for all the good that you've given me. What's interesting over here, and, and, and you know, and it, it was, you know, this whole act, this whole, uh, uh, this whole action over here um, that Prashat Kitavo speaks of is plainly put as a, a, a show of gratitude. Hakaratatov. But what's interesting in this lesson, besides the fact that they go through this huge effort in order to bring the first fruits as a sign of gratitude, there's an additional thing that we must learn over here. There's a script. There's an actual script that the person has to say when he's handing over the basket to the Kohen. And without going too, too long into it, I'll just paraphrase. But the person has to say, you know, instead of just hit, handing over the basket and say, thank you, God, for all the good that you've given me. Here's the basket of today's, uh, of this year's first fruits. Thank you very much. I'm out. He doesn't do that. Something else happens. He starts to go all the way back. He goes all the way back to the beginning. The Kohen is standing in front of him and he tells him, you know what I'm doing here? I am from the ancestry of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And my father Yaakov had a terrible father-in-law that, that tormented him. And he had to run away. And when he ran away, he had to go with his family. And they went to Egypt. When they moved to Egypt, they eventually became slaves. After they became slaves in Egypt, they got saved from Moshe Rabbeinu all the way to get out of the desert, into the desert. Once they were in the desert, they were there for 40 years. After 40 years, they came all the way to... Uh, Eretz Yisrael, after Eretz Yisrael, we conquered the land. It got divided. I got my share. I planted the. I planted my trees, and here's my first, my first fruits. And I'm here to tell you, thank you. Of, of course, I'm paraphrasing. The pesukim are way different, but just to give you an idea of what he's saying. Now, why would he have to go through all that? Why does he have to go to Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov? Why? Gratitude to show us that it's not how did I get here? It's not that I got here on my own. He says, if it wasn't for my great, great, great grandfather, 
who was the you know the, the first one to introduce monotheism to the world. If it wasn't for Yitzchak, if it wasn't for Yaakov, if it wasn't for Moshe, if it wasn't for the desert, if it wasn't for the conquering, if it wasn't for all that, I wouldn't be here. He had a sense of gratitude for every single person, event that got him to that point of owning land, owning trees, and bringing the, for, uh, the fruits to Kadosh Baruch Hu. He's saying, I wouldn't be able to be here. He's giving a testimony of his success story. I wouldn't be able to be here without all the people that have gotten me here. You know, maybe I can give you an example. You know, when uh, I, I hate to use these types of examples, like, you know, like TVs and, and shows. But back in the days when I used to watch TV, I remember the Oscars would be like, you know, when they stand up, it'd be like, oh, I'd like to thank all the important people in my life and, and all the little people that got me here. And it's exactly that. They would sit there for like two, three minutes and they would just read names, names, names. I always thought it was like, oh, so boring. Who cares? But you know what? It's a, it was a great show of gratitude that when they got to their highest peak of their success, when they're receiving accolades for their best performance, they took time out to, 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 to thank all the people in their family, all their people in their team, and all the little people that got me there. It's a sense of gratitude. And that is what is Zechut Avot. Zechut Avot is when we have gratitude for all that our uh, ancestry did before for us. We'll come back to that as well. Having learned this lesson, Having learned this lesson that the farmer that came all the way to Bet HaMikdash in order to say thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and that long script and that long-winded speech that he gave just to say thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So I understand that this is a, 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 it's, it's a nice way to remember everyone that, that got you there along the way when it comes to being thankful. Okay, so the question is, how about when we are not grateful? How about when we are not in a state of joy, not in a state of success? How about when we are sinning? How about when we are transgressing? How about when, uh, uh, when we are, um, when we are in, in a, in the, on the wrong path? Can we use the same formula? Can we use the same formula of gratitude for forgiveness? Is that possible? Because this seems so great when it when it when it when it uh, when it's applied to gratefulness. Can we use the exact same formula for teshuva, for kaparat avonot, for the forgiveness of sins? So, if you're Sephardic and you've been in shul. Uh, for the past three weeks, uh, singing Salichot, you might have noticed a pattern. You might have noticed something. You might have noticed that Schut Avot, the merit of the forefathers, is being mentioned over and over and over and over and over again. We don't stop talking about uh, uh, giants in our history that have come before us and everything that God has done for them and what they were and what they did for God as well and it was very interesting because as soon as I read Parashat Kitavo and I saw the Hakarat Tov but Shut Avot was there when I was the following morning praying in Salichot I'm saying there's, there's a Shut Avot here in this prayer of the Chodesh of Elul So, the schut avod that's being mentioned over and over again in order to activate God's mercy, to forgive us in the merit of our fathers and on many other righteous individuals in Jewish history. And it's absolutely incredible. I'm just going to get this book and I'll read it to you. So this is probably going to be the part where I sing. So you might want to look, might want to lower the the volume a little bit. So here we go, page one thirty six in my Sadi Chod book. Just so you can understand, I, I mean, for the Ashkenaz people in the group, you guys are going to be reading this for um, for about a week. 
in about 10 days from now. The Sephardic people have been waking up early every single day. And, all day, and, they, and they sit there an hour before tefillah, reading about 100 pages, singing half of it, pounding on their chest, asking for forgiveness. And some, and some of the text it just jumps out at you that is completely relying the, the schut avot. I don't, in, in meaning half of the half of Salichot is when you're saying I am sorry, I sinned, I did this wrong, and the other half of the book we're constantly mentioning the Schut Avot. It goes like this. We say that we want Rahmana Itka. We say it over and over again. Rahmana Itka, Rahmana Itka. God remember. God remember. Remember what? And it says Avraham Rechima, Itzhak Akeda, Yaakov Shelema, Moshe Nevi'a, Aharon Kahana, Yosef Tzadika, David Malka Meshicha, Pinchas Kana'a, Shlomo Malka. What's going on? We want God to remember uh, the, 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 uh, the mercy of Avraham, the Akeda of Itzhak, that Yaakov was uh, Shalem, that Moshe his Navi, that uh, his Kohen Aharon, that Yosef that was the Tzadik, that David Malka Mashicha, that Pinchas who was a Zalat, Shlomo Amelech, David Amelech. Over and over and over again, we're asking Hashem, please remember them. I know if you. Uh, you know, a lot of um, when we get to this uh, prayer of uh, uh, Anenu, you know, there's a there's a basic Anenu that everybody says Anenu Elohe Abraham Anenu, right? So we say Hashem, uh, answer us, the God of Abraham, and then Pachad Yitzchak, Abir Yaakov, Magen David. Again, we're mentioning mentioning it. And then after that, we, we literally say it, de In the merit of Bar Yochai, please answer us. In Moroccan shoes, we say, de babasali. We, we remember, we remind Hashem of the schut of Babasali. Why? Because we have over here, we have over here merits that we're trying to tap into. We're trying to tell Hashem, we're connected to those giants. We're connected to them. As a matter of fact, if you go <clears throat> just a few pages over towards the end of Salichot, we start demanding from Hashem that He not forget and that He does, that He actually uh, forgives us because of them. It says, Hashem, Aseleman Shemecha, Aseleman Eva Mezercha, Aseleman Yitzchak Nehekad, Be'ulamach. We start telling Hashem, Aseh. Actually, he said, We tell Hashem, I say, imagine, we are telling the, the, the creator of the world, God, do, I say, how can we even use those words? How can even we use that, 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 that language? I say, Hashem, we're, we're almost like commanding God to do it. Do it in the merit of Abraham. Do it in the merit of Yitzchak. Do it in the merit of Yaakov. Do it in the merit of Moshe. Do it in the merit of Aharon. Do it in the merit of Pinchas. Do it in the merit of David. Do it in the merit of Shlomo. How can we say that to him? Well, first you should know that, uh, you know, the reason why even the rabbis wrote this prayer with Aseh is because one of the mitzvot Aseh, one of the positive commandments, is to actually pray to God. The, the, the Gemara says, what is the avodat lev? What is the work that you do with the heart? It's tefillah. So we were commanded to pray to Hashem. So this is praying. We are praying. We're performing a positive commandment. But what we're doing, we're asking Hashem, please, we're praying that you do it in the merit of of our forefathers. In the merit of all the righteous Jews that have come before us, righteous leaders. Why? Why? For thousands and thousands of years, we're pleading to Hashem, forgive us in the merit in their zechut. Why? Because it's very, very simple. And it's something that maybe you guys might not have known. Is that the, all the good that we have, all the good that we have, is most probably is in the merit of our forefathers. Very, very rarely do we have uh, 
uh, things that are in our lives that are within our merit. And we know that. Most people know that we're not checking, we're not handing in 100% to God at the end of every year. Grade yourself. Are you 80, 70, 65, failing, below failing, not even passing? What is it? Grade yourself. What is your performance to God? So if you have no relationship with God, if you're not performing the, uh, any mitzvot, if, you, if you're clueless to what Parashat Shavua is or what Torah learning is, and yet you still have a car, you still have money, you still have food, you still have fancy clothes, you still have the good life. Where is that from? If your performance is completely below par, where is all the good in your life coming from? It's in the merit of the forefathers. All the successes that we have is in the merit of righteous Jews that have preceded us. Righteous Jews that have come before us. All our blessings come from our Father. From our, I'm sorry, from, all our blessings come from our fathers, from our grandfathers, from our great-great-fathers. They have paved the way for our blessings. Some of the success that we're experiencing today is only because our ancestors did the work. Just like the farmer in the time of Bet HaMikdash, just like the farmer would come and activate the Shut Avot and say thank you, similarly, the only way we get out of our yearly mess of spiritual transgressions, oftentimes, is because we rely on Shut Avot. That's why half of the book of Selichot is, is, is text about the merit of the forefathers. We mentioned over and over and over again, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yitzhak, we mentioned Akedat Yitzhak, you know, Akedat Yitzhak, that, that self-sacrifice, that Mesirut uh, Nefesh, that Olat Temima, he was considered a whole offering, he was completely pure and holy. You should know that this Akedat Yitzhak, that Be'ezrat Hashem Blineder, I'm hoping that we'll be able to learn it in, in our Tefillah 101 class. You don't know how much we rely on this. You have no idea how much we rely on Akedat Yitzhak. If you open up the Sidur, the prayer book, the first prayer of every day is what? Akedat Yitzhak. That's the first thing we want to mention to God. Hey, hey, remember that my great-great-great-grandfather tied himself, tied up his son and they were willing to die for you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The father was willing to kill his son for you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Let, let, let that be the first thing I want to remind you every single morning before I start praying. This Akedat Yitzchak, if you see it, it's mentioned everywhere in this Selichot book. Every Selich, everything the Selichot has to do with Akedat Yitzchak. Rosh Hashanah, one of the biggest songs in the shuls is Dake. What is it? Akedat Yitzchak. You have no idea how much we're constantly swiping that card, Akedat Yitzchak card, for, for all our transgression. Hashem, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget that Akedat Yitzchak. Don't forget how Abraham tied up his son. Don't forget how Yitzchak stretched out his neck. He says, I'm ready to die for you, Akedat Yitzchak. Why? In order to activate God's mercy. For us, that our teshuvah process wasn't enough to clean up all our transgressions. So we said we need help from Abba and Im, from, from our forefathers from before, in order to get out of this mess. Yaakov Avinu, how we keep mentioning Yaakov, Bechir Shebaavot, who was the choicest of all the patriarchs. And you know why? Because Abraham had two children. He had Ishmael and Yitzchak. Ishmael was the psoret, and uh, Yitzhak was the ikar. In other words, uh, Avraham had two children. The main one that, that, that continued his lineage was Yitzhak. Uh, all, all, all the negative that Avraham had to give had to go into Ishmael. Yitzhak also had two children. He had twins. He had Esav and Yaakov. Esav took all the negative, all the psoret, and Yaakov took all the good from Yitzchak. Yaakov was so, uh, had no psolid. 
all of twelve, or all of Yaakov's twelve children were perfect. So we see that from there, the uh, the nation of Israel started. That's why the twelve Shevatim are became a, or, or the uh, the the Bnei Israel, the sons of Israel, come from who? From Yaakov, because there's no psalit. There's no, nothing negative, nothing evil that had to come out of him. So Yaakov, we remind him, remember Yaakov, the holy Yaakov, the Tamim Yaakov, that went through all the trials and tribulations, and he was Ish Tamim, Yeshev Aalot, that he would only sit and study and learn, that all the 12 tribes came from him, we remind Hashem. Not to, you get the gist, but we can continue on and on with Moshe Rabbeinu, we can continue about Aharon uh, Kohen, Oev Shalom, Oedev Shalom, Pinchas, Dezela, that fights for Hashem's honor, etc., etc. Our success and our yearly survival depends on our ancestry. It depends on our ancestry and their merits. These are not just characters that we come across uh, once a year during the time of Bereshit. And we're like, oh, Great car, you know, great story. Here's here's the beginning. Adam, Chava, Noah, and then Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and then we move on to the desert. Now we move on to Egypt. After Egypt, the desert, and then they move to Israel. It's not like that. The entire year of our lives rely on Shut Avot for everything. How many of us are living like that? How many of us are even giving that much importance or that much respect to? To, to, to the ancestry that we come from. We get life. We get sustenance, both physical and spiritual sustenance, because we come from them. How lucky are we to be born Jewish, to, ha to, to have Jewish parents from a lineage where the mother and the father is Jewish, and their mother and father is Jewish, and their mother and father is Jewish, and all the way back to Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. And constantly be able to call out to Hashem in their merit, in their merit, in my family's merit. Please forgive me. However, even though we just discovered this awesome free pass or awesome pass that we have in our lives that we can use at certain times. <clears throat> and you now understand more clearly what is Zechut Avot? What is the, the merit of the forefathers and its greatness and how it's come through for us for thousands and thousands of years? However, there is still the personal work that we must do. Remember, Elokeinu Veloke Avotenu. We just explained now Eloke Avotenu, the, 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 the God of our forefathers. We just explained that. But now it's about Elokeinu or Elohai, my God, our God. What about that personal experience? That's still on the table. You still have to do that. You can't just use uh, uh, the, the merit of our forefathers as a crutch. You must do your own work. This is the time to do the work. Your life is on the line. So, this time that we are in right now, the month of Elul, and the personal work we must do, the personal introspect, the, the, the spiritual audit that we have to put ourselves through during the month of Elul or during the time of the, the king is in the field. It has a dual pathway. You have to work on yourself between Adam Vamakom, between you and God, your personal relationship with God, and Adam Vechavero, you and another Jew, you and another person. Which we know that without Ben Adam Lechavero, if you are not going to iron out your differences or your transgressions of the past year with all the people that you hurt, which happen to be God's children, Hashem does not want to hear from you. First, ma first make it right by my children, then make it right by me. A lot of people think that if they're going to have this uh, you know, this esoteric experience, this whole month of Elul, just connecting to God, fasting, praying, losing sleep, uh, finishing Tehillim books twice a day, it's going to get them there. It's not going to get you there. You got to make it right with the people you hurt first. Ben Adam Lamakom is secondary. Hashem says, don't worry, we can, me and you can figure things out, but first show me that you're going to make good with my children. 
and I always use this as an example, parents can understand this. Imagine if there's a guy that's super mean to your children. He yells at them, he screams at them, he disrespects them, or chas v'shalom, he hits them, and then he comes to you and he's, he wants to go and uh, you know have a beer with you, he wants to go have coffee with you. Would you have anything with that man? No, you're going to say, excuse me, as long as you're treating my children like that, me and you can't have a relationship. Similarly is God. God is saying, first, make a right, ben adam lechavero, and then, ben adam lamakom. And that's the work of this time. That's your personal uh, work that you need to do. Zchut avot can only get you so far. In other words, it's a huge thing, the merit of our forefathers. We're not discounting it. And it does wipe out and it does, uh, certain things. And it also does give us some sort of spiritual success as well as physical success, material success. But it doesn't do everything. You still have to do your personal part. So we still have work to do. Elul is still here. I'll give you an example of where we are today. Today is the 19th of Elul. We're about 10 days away. We're about 10 days away. I'll give you a small little example so you can understand where we are and what's the right way to think. You know, in Bnei Brak, which is a very religious city in Israel, there are tons and tons of synagogues and, 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 and learning rooms and, uh, and yeshivas and in Israel, they actually have an air conditioner that you have to pay to make it work. Certain synagogues or certain places that don't have the greatest budgets or the biggest budgets, and obviously it gets very hot in Israel and you can't sit for hours and hours in heat. You gotta feel comfortable or somewhat comfortable when you are uh, learning. So what they do is they have this uh, air conditioner where you can put in coins or you can put in dollars, I mean, not dollars, shekels. And when you put the money into it, it works. It works. So let's say, for example, you're gonna be there for an hour or two, you put enough money for an hour or two, and it works. And about two minutes before it goes off, it starts to beep, 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 beep. In other words, if you don't put more money into the machine, the air conditioner is going to die. It's going to stop. But if you add more money, it'll keep going. But that beeping sound lets you know that it's about to finish, that it's about to end. So similarly is the time that we're in right now. Like I said, if you are in shul uh, nowadays in the time of Selichot, every single morning you hear the shofar. Every single morning you hear And you know what that is? That's the alarm. That's letting you know the year is about to end. Every morning the shofar is letting you know the year is about to end. The year is about to end. The, the, the year is going to finish. And if you want life to continue, you have to put something. You're just like you have to deposit money into the air conditioner, you have to start depositing zechuyot. You have to start working. You got to start sending mitzvot up to the shamayim in order for it to keep going. The shofar reminds us every single morning, you better start sending up uh, mitzvot to the shamayim. The year is about to end. The year is almost over. It's time to make a deposit. Send up zechuyot so we can keep going, so we can keep living. And we must send up personal zechuyot to the shamayim before the end of the year. Because the rabbis tell us that there are several books that open up. There is Sefer HaChaim, Sefer HaMetib, Sefer HaBenonim. Sefer HaChaim, the, the, the book of life, obviously that's for the righteous, right? They're righteous, right away, automatically they get written in the book of life. The book of the dead, okay, those are the wicked. Those that need to pass away this year, they're written in that book. Everybody else is considered a Benoni, like an intermediary, is in between. In other words, the scales are not tipped. You're right there in the middle. One thing can tip the scale for good or for bad. So the shofar that tells you every single day, do, 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 the year is about to end, it's to wake you up, put money into the machine, send up zachuyot to the shamayim. You got to send it up in order to tip the scale. There's a Kabbalistic concept called 
התראותותה דמטה, התראותותה דמעלה. In Hebrew it means התעוררות של מטה, התעוררות של מעלה. There's some sort of a, an awakening or some sort of a, 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 an event, an action that happens below. And when it happens below, it actually awakens and also uh, creates a, 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 a reciprocates an action from above. What does that mean? You need to send something up to the heavens in order for something to come down from the heavens. I'll give you an example. Why is there thunder before rain? Why is there this huge sound of thunder in the, in, in the sky that usually scares everyone and your heart skips a beat if it's really, really loud, especially here in Florida, before rain? So Chazal tell us, our sages tell us, because rain is a blessing. Rain is is a big beracha that's coming down to the world. And before there is a beracha, before a blessing comes down from the heavens, we need to send something up. In order for the rain to come down, in order for the blessing to come down, we first have to send something up. So we know that when you hear uh, thunder, what's the first thing that you do? Huh? You get scared. Shmai Sahil, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Oh my God, what is that noise? So that Shep says, Oh, so Shmai Sahil. Oh, good. You said you made a you made a prayer. You sent a bracha. Good. Now I can send you back down. Now I can send you down the rain. Or when a person is so scared, Oh, Hashem, let me say a prayer of Tehillim. These uh, the, the, uh, this thunder is so scary. Hashem, please protect me. Oh, you're saying a prayer. You're sending up uh, a prayer of Tehillim. Okay, and now I can send down the bracha of the rain. In other words, in order for the blessing to come down, we have to send something up. So, Yom Haddin is coming. Judgment Day is on its way. We need to activate mercy. We need to activate Rachamim. During these days, there's nothing more that we need more than God's mercy. So how do we do that? How do we activate God's mercy? What can we send up so Hashem sends down mercy upon us so every single day once again it's in our prayers it's so important to know prayer and what we're saying and the words and the meaning but <clears throat> for those of you that are just discovering it or for those of you that are already know this it's very uh it's very interesting because these uh, master keys to life are right under our nose these uh, secrets to life that we are in search of all the time are right under our nose. For example, in the Amidah, once again, in the Sim Shalom part, which is the right towards the end of the prayer, it says over there, uh, it gives us four life keys. It says, Hashem, you gave us, what did He give us? Torah v'chaim, Ava v'chesed. What does it mean? Hashem gave us Torah and life, love and kindness, charity and mercy, a blessing and peace. The rabbis tell us that there's a, a, a unique reason why these two words are paired together. It says, Torah v'chaim. Chaim, life. Who wants life? Everybody wants life. So if you want life, you know what you need to do? You need to learn Torah. It's a tree of life to those that, are, that, that uh, cling to it. So if you want life, learn Torah. Ahava is love. Who doesn't want love? Love from their wife, life, love from their husband, love from their children, love from their friends, love from strangers. You want to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. How do you activate love? You activate it through chesed acts of kindness when you do acts of kindness with another person that in return activates love in their heart for you the next one is tzedakah v'rachamim here it is the one that we're looking for here's the master key that we are looking for mercy how do you activate mercy how do you activate mercy now 10 days between the big court day between 10 days before judgment day before everything is on the line i need mercy how do i activate it tzedakah 
charity. And charity is not just what you think, which is money. There's more to it, which we'll discuss. But let's just do the last one. Beracha v'shalom. Beracha means blessing. Who doesn't want to be blessed? Imagine, you're blessed. Everything that you do has a blessing in it. How do you activate the blessing? Shalom. Peace. Keep the peace. Increase the peace. Help people be in peace. Chase peace. As, once you start to increase the peace in your immediate circle and in the world, you become automatically blessed from God. There you go. Four major life tools, four keys to success buried in the Amidah. But for the one that we're going to extract for our learning is the key of tzedakah v'rachamim. In order to activate mercy, we need to give tzedakah. Now, tzedakah is not only money. Even though uh, we should discuss money, what is money? So, you know, <clears throat> helping, you know, taking money from your pocket and helping somebody out is a great thing, right? Is helping somebody that's in need, it's great. During these times, uh, you know, what you want to do is maybe you could take $100 and, and help one person and you could say, oh, for sure, that was great. I gave $100 to charity. Yeah, that's, that counts as something huge. But during the, during the month of Elul, or in general, but just recommending now for the month of Elul, it's a smarter thing to maybe, maybe get $20 in coins and $80 in singles and just always keep them on you. Keep it in your pocket, keep it in your purse. And every time that you have a chance to give, a, you know, we, we have tzedakah boxes around the house and the shuls, wherever we go. Every time you pass by a tzedakah box, put a nickel, put a dime. You left the room, you came back, not a problem. Why? Send it up. Send up tzedakah. Send up tzedakah. Send up to the shamayim something so the mercy can come down. Start activating. Instead of sending up one act of mercy at $100, send up 100, 200, 300 acts of mercy with the coins, with putting tzedakah in the supermarket, putting tzedakah in the kids' school, putting tzedakah in your, in, in, in your uh, charity box in the house. Uh, you go to the street, you, you're driving by, you see people that need help, people by the, by the supermarket, people by the, the shul. Start giving tzedakah, start helping people. So in other words, not only that, even if people have a very, very big project, oh, we need $1,000 for this and $2,000 for that and $100,000 for this, or if you have these GoFundMes or these tzedakah charities on Facebook or anywhere else, not a problem. Donate a dollar. Donate $5. Why? Because when that big charity finally gets what, uh, uh, the sum of money that they needed, in the Shemaim, all of a sudden they see, oh, there he is. Sharon is here and Sharon is there. Sharon is here. Sharon is there. Sharon is here. He's everywhere. He's got uh, tzedakah over here. He's got tzedakah in Texas, tzedakah in Israel, tzedakah in China. He's got tzedakah in Miami. Meanwhile, maybe I just spent whatever I can afford, $20, $30, $50, $100, but I put my name on a bunch of different acts of charity. And in return, rachamim, mercy that is so much needed for this time. Now, even though that this is something that you could do with money, it's not always about money. It's not always about, uh, that's not the only way you can help a person. There's another way of helping. There's another way of doing charity. And that is by you becoming the charity, you becoming the tzedakah. In other words, why don't you help another person? If another person is uh, looking for a job, Help him find a job. If he is looking for some, uh, some needs some physical help, moving boxes, uh, picking things up, uh, doing some yard work, whatever it is, help out. You be the tzedakah. Sometimes it's not about even about uh, anything physical. Sometimes it's even about giving advice. If you're smart, if you're educated, if you're a professional, and you can help out another person by giving them good advice, that's charity. That activates mercy. That sends mercy down from the heavens. Sometimes even just a smile, just smiling at somebody, letting them have a good feeling it's a, it is, is also an act of kindness, an act of charity, and that brings down mercy from the heavens. As we learned in the previous lesson about a couple of weeks ago from Mikhtav Meliyahu, Rabbi Dessler's book, that 
doing tzedakah with others while you are busying yourself helping out other people, Hashem says, I'll do tzedakah with you. You care about other people. You care about this guy not having a job, this guy not having enough money, this guy need, needing good advice, this one needing some, uh, uh, some shlom bayit help, helping them, uh, him and his wife get along. If you are helping other people, you are becoming the charity, then Hashem says, then I will do tzedakah with you. I, Hashem is the great equalizer. He doesn't like to owe anybody. You do chesed, Hashem in return does chesed for you. You did tzedakah in Hashem's world, in Hashem's uh, in the high heavens, tzedakah activates mercy. And Hashem activates mercy on you. And this is what we need today. Never forget zechut avot. Don't forget that we have that going for us. The, the, the merit of our forefathers. Till today it's saving us. But also don't forget the personal zechut that needs to be sent up as well. Don't forget that you have work to do. Don't forget that this is the time that you must activate rachamim. You must activate mercy. We need it in Elul. We need it in Judgment Day. We need it in Naset We need it on Yom Kippur when Hashem puts the stem on it and says, Gmar Chatima Tova. And the reason why we need this, the reason why we need it is because we want the previous year to end and we want the new year to start but the way we start the the, the, the tefillah of of rosh hashanah is let the previous year and its curses end and this year more than any other year we could really feel that feel those words we could really mean that and then the next line is Let the new year begin with its blessings. And if you want to do all that, you need to activate all the life tools that you have. The schut avod, the merit of your forefathers, your teshuvah process, sending up during this time your personal schut, starting to turn on, you know, sending up to the shamayim, all the things that the 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 lemata starting to send things things from from below so in order things can start coming from above specifically mercy activate rachamim in your life and just like we said in the beginning of the series this is the time of ani le dodi ve dodi li vashetevot elul the month of elul has a formula ani le dodi first you show an action towards God. First you do teshuva. First you put in the work. And Hashem says, I got you. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to be right there for you to forgive you for all your sins. Because not only is He the King of the world, but He's also our loving Father. That we all merit to do a proper teshuva. That we all merit to get connected to the schut avot. To, to merit to uh, to not only get connected to it, but to live to live life knowing that some some if not all of the good that's in our life is because we are connected to a lineage of spiritual giants, and that be'ezrat Hashem that we still have enough time to do the proper teshuva and merit to a shana tova umetuka in this upcoming year. As a matter of fact, there's a very famous. Uh, Hatam Sofer that uh, is very popular right now that a lot of people are talking about. Hatam Sofer uh, uh, wrote this book about 190 years ago. And in, 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 in his book, it says, incredible, he says that there's going to be a very, very tough year in the future. And that tough year is going to be Taf Shin Pei. The year we're in right now, the year of the Corona. He wrote it 190 years ago. This, this holy rabbi. But he said that the following year, right after Tafshin Pei, Tafshin Pei, Pei Aleph, is going to be an immense year for tremendous success. So we thought that we could say something like this. There's a Pasuk in Tehilim that says, Edut uh, Be Yosef Samo, Safat Lo Yadati Eshma. 
So it talks about the time when Yosef was in Egypt and he didn't speak the language and all he had to do is he listened and he was able to pick up the language. In other words, uh, a tip for life. You want to learn a new language? Be around people that speak it, you'll pick it up. The more you hear a language, the more you're able to pick it up and learn it. However, that second part of the Pasuk that says, Safat lo yadati eshma, the word Safat spells out the name of this year, Taf Shin Pei. Taf Shin Pei is the same letters as Safat. So on the year of Taf Shin Pei, lo yadati, I don't know eshma is what I'm going to hear. And this year, we know that's one thing that we've heard over and over and over again. Are you going to school? I don't know. Are you going on vacation? I don't know. Is your he, is he kid getting a bar mitzvah? I don't know. Are you getting married? I don't know. Are you moving to Israel? I don't know. Are you sending them back to school? I don't know. Are you going to shul? I don't know. The entire year, every time people ask you a question, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Safat, lo yadati, eshma. On the year of Tav Shin Pei, all I'm going to hear is lo yadati, I don't know. Incredible. The second chidush is that the Hatam Sofer said that the following year, the Tav Shin Pei Aleph, is going to be a year that me'ashpot yarim evyon. What's uh, Tav Shin Pei Aleph spells out the word ashpot, meaning from the low levels, from the depths, I'm going to pick up the uh, uh, the needy, the, the poor man, which means that all the trouble, all the things that we're going through right now with the financial collapse and all the, the this... Uh, uh, havoc that we're seeing with uh, the, the civil unrest, etc., 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 without going in too much into that, that is the energy of Tavshin Pei. The upcoming year, Tavshin Pei Aleph, is a year of tremendous success. Yarim Evyon. That he's going to uplift from the lowest level, from the from the, uh, the garbage, from the garbage, from the gutter. He's going to lift up the Evyon and elevate them. So Be'ezat Hashem, that we merit to live that, experience that, that we merit to be uh, part of this successful year and that we have a Gmar Hatima Tova and, and, and the only way to, to uh, merit that is by taking advantage of Elul, taking advantage of Shkut Avot, taking advantage of your own personal zikhut, making sure that you're sending up a lot of tzedakah to the Shamaim so another mercy can come down and the Be'ezat Hashem, we, are, we merit to a shana to vay matukam. Shitu lebechem lechela pasegu amenata lemante sepulu do acharon. I am going.